Okay, so what's going on, everyone? My name is Under the Radar, and uh, I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. Um, I just woke up. Uh, I'll decide myself then. I just woke up, so I'm very, very nervous. <laughs> I'm so terrified. Um, this is NPA week two. We're going up against Old School Sin. Uh, and I'm absolutely terrified. I'm going to go ahead and select my participating team. Right there. I know they're all correctly ginned because I did them. They're all legal. Because I'm a boss ass bitch. Um, whew, man, I am so freaking nervous. I want to be 2-0. This has just been such a long week. Once this battle's done, I'll be ready to go. I'll be ready to get this over with. But let's see what he brings. So he doesn't bring Blissey. What else doesn't he bring? Hmm. He doesn't bring... That's about it. He brought... Uh, Played all instead. Um, I'm just gonna lead off with my cat. It's my best lead off because I can just go ahead and I can click parting shot. Like I lose nothing from it, pretty much. And that is fantastic. Oh man, I am so freaking nervous. Like, you know the shakes that you get in the pit of your stomach whenever you're really nervous? That's what I have right now. It's not very cool. So I'm going to send out Cat. Hopefully he leads off with, like, his Hydreigon. Like, that would be amazing. I'm just going to click Play Rough against this thing. Turn 1. I'm clicking Play Rough. He's going to be clicking U-Turn. I don't doubt it. I'm clicking Play Rough, and I'm going to hopefully pick up the kill. And hopefully I land. Hopefully. <laughs> Here's to hoping. Please. Even if I get off like a massive like 90%, I'll be happy. But there's no way he's going to drop a Draco. Uh, even if he does, it's a roll to kill me. Play rough. I do hit it. Oh, so close. He did drop a Draco. Okay, so he just went straight for it. Um, let's see if this kills me. Yep, okay, cool. So, there, that's kind of an iffy, like, exchange. I did drop my really big win con for Hydreigon. However, taking out this Hydreigon is a massive threat gone, and I love that. Now, here, I can just go into my Whimsicott. And I can click U-turn. I lose nothing from it. I'll either outspeed him and kill him. Getting off that massive damage on Hydreigon was huge. Because offensively, that Persian didn't do a whole, whole lot. Uh, everything else on his team, I can pretty much handle. But right here, I'm just going to click U-turn. Clicking play rough, turn one. That's a That was a massive roll. Uh, it, it was about a 50-50 roll, so... It's not like it was, I'm surprised that he lived. I was hoping that I'd be able to pick up, pick up the KO, but it is what it is. Um, him killing me was also a little bit of a roll. Just to let you guys know, I'll tell you the exact calc of it. Uh, he's going to withdraw, which is cool. He went into Chandelure. Awesome. Oh, Draco Meteor isn't a roll. What was I thinking? Hmm. I must have been thinking something else. I must have been thinking a different set that I was running. Oh, well. Uh, here, I'm just going to go into my uh, Needle Queen. And I'm going to set up my rocks. Because rocks are going to be helpful. I kind of want to predict the... Uh, I kind of want to predict the switch into what's it called, but 
So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about going for rocks, and then I'm thinking about going into my Zardex, because if he rapid spins or gets up his own rocks, I want to be able to get off them. Uh, the thing first. Plus, if I get up these rocks, that Hydreigon is dead upon re-entry. I mean, it's dead anyway, because I do have my, um, what's it called? The, uh, vacuum wave, so... Plus, right here, I'll be able to find out if he's, like, scarfed or anything like that. If he's sub. If he's sub life orb. I do wish Persian got to stay around a little bit longer, but... Hey-ho, what can you do? If I had clicked Parting Shot and gone into my Whimsicott, like, I would've... That would've been a really good play, but... So he's gonna go back in Hydreigon. Which is fine. So, part of me really just wants to kill this thing. Part of me also really wants to go into my Whimsicott. Draco Meteor is doing 56 max. So I'll still be at some good health. Dark Pulse is doing 35 max. I think I'm just going to click Ice Beam. Because, like, I don't want to risk him going for, like, a prediction and getting some good damage off on my Whimsicott because that Whimsicott's gonna be pretty big late game. But at the same time, so is this for that Magnazone. Whimsicott takes 36 from a Dark Pulse. This is tough. I think I'm gonna go into Whimsicott. I think because if I can keep this thing fully healthy then I'll be able to deal with the Magnezone a little bit easier let's see if he goes for a Dark Pulse or if he just predicts me to go for this Fire Blast okay cool so that's nice now right here Shadow Ball guaranteed kills him Chandelure, it should kill after rocks because it does 69%. It took a U-turn damage. Should kill. At least very good chance. And Claydol. Claydol, I can just Giga Drain afterwards and get all my health back. So he's probably just gonna click Dark Pulse here again. But I'm gonna click Shadow Ball. Yeah, cool. So he was scarfed. Whimsicott looked so happy just then. What the heck? <clears throat> so now it just becomes a matter of what he wants to go into. Like, I'm not too, too worried about um, my Lodic. As long as I have my Whimsicott alive. Now that Hydreigon's down, Lucario's probably the most expendable thing. Like, if he goes into his uh, Tapu Bulu right here, I'm probably going to go into Lucario. Danger Zone, this is definitely the... Uh... Ooh, no, it's not. Okay. Cool. So here, I have no other play except to go into my Nidoqueen. He can't Volt Switch on me. Hidden Power Ground is not a 2 at KO, I don't think. Unless he's analytic. Uh...
So this is a tough situation because Flash Cannon does have a chance to do a KO me. So part of me wants to go into Lucario. Because nothing this thing can do can Oko me, then I can get off a really strong vacuum wave. And if he does go for the Flash Cannon, it should be doing about 35% max. He goes for Hidden Power Ground. Well, that's the same as Hidden Power Fire. It's doing 70%. So my Lucario can live any one hit. I'm going to go into that. I can't let Needle Queen get weakened just yet because it does have a chance to do okay, this thing. So, Volt Switch, it's fine. Jesus, that's specs. Yeah, that's definitely specs. Yeah. Cool. But that is good to know that it is specs. That means that my Zard can outspeed it, guaranteed. If he goes into his Chandelure right here, I'm going to make the exact same plan. I'm going to sack this thing off. Um, knowing that his Magnazone is Specs. It's 123 speed. If he's max speed, he'll outspeed my... Um, yeah. So here, I have to sack this thing off. I don't really have another choice. I'm going to click Dark Pulse. If he's uh, Scarfed on this thing as well, then cool. But I don't think he is. Um... Also, in case you can't tell, I'm playing extremely risky. Um, <laughs> I'm just not playing like myself, but that's fine. I'm just going to go and click Dark Pulse, see if he's dual scarfed. If he's not, cool, I kill this thing. There's the two big offensive threats down to my team. Then I can pretty much clean up with Zardex late game. If he is scarfed, then after this I go into my Needle Queen, and uh, I start clicking some buttons. Because that's about all I do with Pokemon. I'm a little sad I lost Persian. I really expected him to either uh, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, or U-Turn. So he has Dual Scarfer. That's really nice. He doesn't have Rocks up. So now I'm going to go into my Zardax instead of my Needle Queen. Um, to get all my Mega Evolution. And so you guys know. Oh shoot, I forgot to do something. I forgot to change this back. Oh no, I didn't. Hmm. Huh. 70 seconds. I just want to know how much this is going to do to Chandelure. Should kill. Sorry that I'm being kind of quiet. Yeah, Dragon Claw is 80% minimum. And with with a Psychic, I can I can tank it for days because it's unstab. Yeah, Psychic is doing less than 50%. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to click the Mega Evolve button. I kind of want to click sub, but at the same time, I'm not. I'll just go ahead and click Dragon Claw. He goes into his Milotic right here. Uh, that's fine. Death Metal. That's Tapu Bulu, isn't it? Oh, no, that's Milotic. Cool. So after Rocks, this should be a 2 KO because I am adamant max attack. At least I'm hoping it's a 2 KO. If not, it'd be a little depressing. But it should be. And it's going to be close. Um, so, he can either recover and hope I don't get a crit. Which eventually I will. But I'm going to click Dragon Claw again. 
If he clicks Dragon Tail or Haze or anything like that or Scald or anything, he can't do a whole lot to me. Uh, but I, I fully expect him to recover it here as I just kill him. So that, my friends, is why you run Adamant Max Attack Zard to break down walls. <laughs> I love this thing so much. Now, if he goes into his Tapu Bulu right here, I'm going to say, and I'm going to click Flare Blitz, uh, Stone Edge, unless he's banded, has a chance to Oko me, but I Oko him first, and if he's banded, he cannot speed me. Uh, Scarfed, I don't think, has a chance to either. So Jolly Scarf Stone Edge does not have a chance to Oko me, whereas Flare Blitz has a guaranteed uh, kill on him. If he goes into his um, spinner right now, right now it's looking like Zardex is going to clean up his team. Tool, what's this? Yeah, cool. So right here, I'm going to go directly into my Jellicent. I lose quite, quite possibly nothing from it. Just because I do not want him getting away, uh, getting rid of these hazards, so that way I can continuously chip down that um, that chandelure. And uh, if he goes for a earth power, this should not be doing a whole whole lot because Jellison is pretty fat. Yeah. Now I'm in a little tiny bit of a predicament right here. Because I can either Scald and hope for the Scald to burn on something, which is probably what I'm going to do. Or I can click Toxic, but if he goes into his Magnezone on that, that would be less than ideal. Now, in order for me to kill this thing with Zard, versus Claydol, why don't they have a bulky Claydol set in the calcs? Like... I need him down about 40%. So I'm going to click Scald here and hope for the burn on something, or hope that... Yeah, pretty much hope for the burn on top of Bulu. That's the big thing. Or he could just uh, stay in with this thing. I'm fine with that. That put him in range of uh, Zard X. So he does get up his own rocks. That's no big deal to me. Because I've already uh, Mega Evolved. And the only thing that I can't really stay in on is Chandelure, and as long as I have my Needle Queen at full health, I can just go ahead and uh, kill that thing, so. Even then... Versus... Chandelure... Scarf... Even then, Shadow Ball doesn't kill me, so... I'll be sitting pretty. I think I might go for another Toxic. Or I'm gonna go for another Scald right here. He's gonna withdraw. Maybe I can get the burn on something. You lift, bro? That's fine. So, rocks. He's also gonna be healing me back up with uh, Grassy Terrain, so that's pretty nice. Scald. I just I kinda hope I get the burn. It'd be nice. Can I? No. Um. His leftovers. He's leftovers. See, this is where I kind of wish I put Will O Wisp on this thing over Toxic, but I really wanted to be able to wear down my Lotic a little bit easier. Part of me really just wants to sack this thing off. <laughs> like, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, part of me really just wants to sack this thing off. As I sack this thing off, I go into Zard, I click Flare Blitz, I kill this, he goes into Shandy, and then he will kill me with a Shadow Ball. Hmm. Hmm. This is tough. I think I'm going to sack off Whimsicott. I think that might be the better play. 
because if I sack off Whimsicott, uh, I don't lose my switch in to Claydol. I don't lose the switch into this. Force him to take a lot of recoil damage on this later on. I still have this to live a hit from Shandy. And say he goes for a Stone Edge predicting, predicting Zard and my Whimsicott lives it. I think Whimsicott is the thing to sack here. Also, shout out to playing Hyper Offense and having to pick your sacks at the right time. It's very hard to do. Does go for the Stone Edge. He will kill me with this, but that is why I did not want to go into Zard. <laughs> So now, I'm going to go into Zard, take 25%, and now I'm just going to click Flare Blitz, I think. Do I lose anything from it? If he goes into... Shandy, I can just click Dragon Claw afterwards and kill that thing. And then I outspeed everything else so I can roost up and pick up a second kill. Yeah, I lose nothing from clicking Flare Blitz here. So I'm just going to kill this thing. Rip. Cool. Okay, so here's how the last couple turns are going to play out, right? I'm going to... Yep. So I'm going to sack this thing off. Going to go into my Nidoqueen. I'm either going to A, scare this out, or B, kill it. same time I also really want to keep this thing around because I can live a rocks entry to where if I sack off like Jellicent right here I have this thing to pick up the kill on Magnezone since I know it's specs and the other thing I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna sack off Jellicent I'm gonna go into Nido Queen after that. Jellicent is too acute by this thing, right? Yeah. At the same time, if I. No, I don't want to sack off Nido Queen. This is difficult, man. I don't know what I want to sack off. Because both mons are really useful. As compared to, uh... Sacking off Zard. Uh, I don't know what I want to do. I'll sack off Jellicent. I'm going to sack off Jellison right here. Because once he kills this thing, I'll be able to uh, go into my Nido Queen and I'll be able to threaten it out. Let's just go for the Shadow Ball. Save play. Damn, that's so much damage. Grassy Train should be disappearing this turn as well. If I'm not mistaken. Not this turn, but like the following turn, like the turn that he kills me. I knew that Chandelure would be the biggest threat going into this game. I'm just going to click Scald, he can kill me. And then... I go into Nidoqueen. I think I click Ice Beam. Because Shadow Ball won't be able to 2 a KO me. Ice Beam will catch the... Um... Catch the clay doll on the switch in. And if he's max HP, it'll be able to 2 a KO him. Which I think he's physically defensive, so that's what I'm gonna do. 
And if I can catch that thing on the switch in, then I'll be able to uh, kill this thing later on. I think that's the play. Clicking Ice Beam. Because Earth Power is so obvious, and it does kill this thing. He cannot kill me. I'm clicking Ice Beam. I'm expecting that stupid clay doll to come in. The only way I get screwed over here is if he goes for Shadow Ball twice and I don't click Earth Power next turn. He is going to withdraw. He's going to go into uh, the thing. Danger Zone. No! Huh. It's a little difficult. Depending on how much uh, speed this thing has, I could outspeed it because... Magnazone... If he's modest max... I don't know, I think he's gonna outspeed me. But I'm still gonna click Earth Power here. I need to. I do outspeed him, cool. That's nice. So, this is why you always run speed investment on your walls, kids. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering why I always do that. But that's awesome. So now, let's see what he does. Say he won't be able to kill me. Goes into tool. I'm gonna take rocks. Click Ice Beam. He might be able to clean up this game with Shandy late. I think he's going to be able to clean up this game uh, with Psychic from Shandy. Uh, but either way, it's a 1 0 loss. That's fine. It's fine, but this is what happens when you build a team the night before. You don't do any mocks. And you have IRL stuff going on. So I hope you guys understand that. Like, I hope you guys understand that right now. I've just been focusing a lot on IRL stuff. Another thing that would uh, say what would save me the game right here is a crit on this ice beam. Yeah. Now Earth Power plus Psychic should be able to kill me, right? Well, now they got the Spadef drop, of course. Um. So, uh, fun fact, it doesn't kill me. I'm at 125 right now. I'm at 63%. I'll gain another 12, come back in, take 6, and I can live a Choice Scarf Psychic. Psychic does 57% max. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click Ice Beam. It also depends if he has a uh, fire blast or not. But next turn, I'm going to sack off Zard, and then once Zard is dead, I'm going to come into Needle Queen. I'm at 137 out of 197. I'm at 69%. I'll be at 61%. So Timid Choice Scarf does 57% max. I should have no way of dying to that Psychic. So, we'll go ahead and sack off Zard. Let's see what he clicks. Shadow Ball I can definitely take. Shadow Ball does 35%. 38% max. I win. Cool. Cool. So that, that turned around pretty quickly. <laughs> um, but yeah, Nido Queen being the MVP of this game, as always. I love this Pokemon. Let me just tell you guys. Go and click Earth Power. Shadow Ball has no chance of killing me. There we go. He's modest. He gets another Spadef drop. Boy! Boy. 
either way, good game, Sin. Dang, 1-0. I misplayed, I didn't team build the best way possible, Analyst, I know you're going to rip me a new one for it, but you know, hey ho, it is what it is, um, but it, it's a 1-0 win, uh, and Scarfed Persian kind of did a thing, and Needle Queen also coming in clutch as always, but Sin, thank you so much for the game, I hope you all did enjoy it, if you did, make sure to leave a like down below, also make sure to leave a comment letting me know if you think that, like, what I could have done this week to team build a little bit better, just because since my head was so foggy, I didn't have the best mindset going into it so i just didn't really know what i should have done but make sure you guys let me know all that stuff down in the comment section below but i'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here thank you all again so much for watching and i hope to see you all in the next video bye bye